Welcome to F1 Briefings. I'm your host and FIA accredited journalist, Alex Harrington. It's a new year. It's a new show. It's a new F1 season. And while this is actually the quietest off-season in the history of the sport, with there being no driver movements whatsoever, there's still quite a bit to talk about. But first, I want to bring attention to the fact it was Michael Schumacher's birthday early this week. It was the 10-year anniversary of his skiing accident over the Christmas holidays. He's now 55 years old, so I just want to celebrate that person just a tiny bit before we get into the video. Now, let's talk about Mercedes. They've been struggling since the change in regulations in 2022. They tried to be smart with the ZeroPod concept, but unfortunately for the team and its fans, the expected performance they'd seen in the wind tunnel didn't come to fruition on the track. Both Lewis Hamilton and George Russell were very vocal about the car not being up to their standards, with the seven-time world champion suffering from a wind drought that spanned over two years now. A win from Russell at Brazil in 2022 gave the team confidence to push forward with this zero-pod design, so we saw an iteration of the concept return at the beginning of 2023, but didn't take long before reality hit and they started a bit of damage control. Russell called the year a little rushed, and according to Lewis, he'd been asking for changes for a long time, with him almost hinting at pushing his team to copy the downwash side pod design of the Red Bull RB19, statistically the most dominant car ever built, and a car that several other teams are unsurprisingly taking note of. Hamilton was asking for a number of things, the side pods, a better floor, the RB19 suspension setup, but something he brought up a lot was the seating position. According to the Brit, he was sat too far forward because of that side pod design, and this affected his confidence. These are things that, under the cost cap, Mercedes couldn't afford to fix in a single year. But the Monaco Grand Prix last year saw the team bring in what changes they could make. They fitted new side pods, the front suspension which was changed, and there was an upgraded floor but it wasn't until upgrades ahead of the Austin Grand Prix that Hamilton was feeling more and more confident. He finished second behind Max and admitted that if there were more laps, he probably would have caught him or at least been in contention to win. The car was, though, disqualified due to excessive wear on the floor, but it looked as though Mercedes were finally moving in the right direction. Now, heading into this year's season, it looks as though Mercedes are finally doing the right thing. They've used 2024 as a learning experience. And while it was an expensive lesson, they're now going into the year with the right mindset. And more importantly, they're not kidding themselves with a concept that has only so far given them issues. On top of this, they have James Allison returning and he's an influence that we're definitely gonna be seeing this year coming. Talking with Motorsport Total, Hamilton, Hamilton admitted that he'll be spending a lot more time in the factory as well. His actual role here sounds like it's more support and morale focused, but he's been incredibly vocal about his frustrations and demands after last year, so he'll likely have a good idea himself of how he wants this car to be developed. He said, and I quote, I'm in the factory much more often now, having meetings with all the department heads to try and motivate and encourage them all. I talk to them, show them where we need to improve and what direction we need to go in. I just tried to help them be positive and to say we can do it. I also looked closely at other vehicles, hint hint, the RB19, and asked a lot of questions just to stimulate ideas. Now, this isn't going to be easy for Mercedes, who are looking to change everything, according to Allison, in their fight to return to the front of the grid. Not just because of the work that's going to go into the car, but also the fact that they are once again kind of starting from the beginning. Red Bull have been working on the same concept for two years now. Aston Martin and McLaren got close in 2023, but with the regulations once again changing in 2026, they only have two years to make this work. What works in Mercedes' favour is the law of diminishing returns. Red Bull is at the top of their game. But as all the designs on the grid converge to what we could assume as perfection, as they learn and develop over these years, their lead will decrease. There's only so much a mind like Adrian Newey and his team can do, so while it's unlikely Mercedes will be able to catch up this year, all things are pointing towards closer racing. Allison is being optimistic, however. He says, quote, even though he didn't make the same leap as McLaren in the last season, we still got a clear idea 
during the season of the areas in which we need to improve. That's what makes the coming season so exciting for us and the current development phase so exciting. If you build a good vehicle, it doesn't take long to unlock its potential. There could be some fight in Mercedes yet. Now, let's move on to the biggest change of the season, and that is Alfa Romeo Sauber. The team changed its name from Alfa Romeo once it, le once it left the sport, and well, it's looking like quite a bit of drama for them, actually. The name has now fallen on its title sponsor, Stake, with the full name of the team being Stake F1 Team. Yeah, it was revealed at 9am on New Year's Day. Not the best time to do a huge name change due to, due to people like me being hungover, tired, asleep, and in fact their ex, formerly Twitter account, still hasn't announced the change despite them teasing it for what felt like the last three years. They have, however, just changed the name on the account and added the new logo, which features green colouring, a colour that we might see on their car's livery this coming season. So let's talk about this then. First of all, it's a shame to see the Sauber name leaving the grid, almost entirely since it joined F1 in the early 90s. But more importantly is the issue this brand has with a number of countries and a number of broadcasters. Stake is an online casino gambling brand, and to promote this is actually illegal in a number of countries. So when the sport visits countries where it's illegal, they'll be known as Kick a streaming site owned by Stick. Yes, this is going to get very confusing, especially for those of the more casual viewers. But to add to this, I highly expect the likes of Sky Sports and Channel 4, ESPN in America, for example, these guys might have issues promoting a brand centered around gambling. Now, I'd love to tell you more about the team, but there's yet another teaser slash countdown for a new website. So, Let's talk about, I suppose, the morality of this sponsor. F1 doesn't shy away from an awkward sponsor here and there. It certainly follows the money, whether it be gambling, tobacco, cryptocurrency, oil. So while there are a lot of people a bit weirded out by having stake as a title sponsor, let's not forget all the tobacco companies that we've seen on the sides of these cars. Patronus and the controversies over the year, Aramco, and the missile strikes in Saudi Arabia. There's plenty of weird stuff going on, but as long as it feeds F1 money, they are apparently fine with it. The car will be revealed on February the 5th this year, and as I said, it will likely have hints of green, but it won't be long until Audi takes over the team in 2026. Hopefully at this point, the Sauber name will return, and this team is going to become a powerhouse, because Audi, under the VW Group has no shortage of resources and development and analysis. A few drivers have been rumoured to have links with Audi, including Carlos Sainz, Nico Hülkenberg, and even Esteban Ocon now. I don't believe Ocon will be moving anytime soon, although we know what Alpine is like at the moment, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Sainz and Hülkenberg in these cars when we get to 2026. Sainz is connected through his father and likely would leave Ferrari after the season he's been having if he was offered something better. And Hülkenberg is a name we've seen dropped a lot into conversations around the German brand, so that wouldn't be a surprise whatsoever. For now, it definitely feels like Stake is a stopgap, a rebound almost after the Alfa Romeo breakup, but I feel like there's a lot in store for this team once Audi officially comes on board. Now. Finally, in this roundup, let's talk about Sky Sports F1. Well, they have recently confirmed that they will be keeping all of their presenters, including the controversial Danica Patrick, for this season. This will maybe be a surprise to a lot of you. Uh, it was, to me at least, after the backlash she got last year for not really knowing what she was talking about. But the reactions her comments were getting from Jensen Button, who's someone who really does know what he's talking about, well, that helped us all through it. Danica has had a questionable career. There's no doubting she's a great driver. She's the most successful woman in American open wheeled racing. She's the only woman to win an IndyCar series race and she has countless other victories to her name. But she said a lot of things that people don't necessarily agree with. She's openly negative about women driving in Formula One saying, and I quote, the nature of the sport is masculine and that it takes the mind of a man to compete in it. She has a podcast that talks about a lot of controversial topics that 
goes against, let's say, what the majority of people think about things like health, relationships, aliens. But in F1, it's the fact that viewers don't believe she brings a lot of value to the broadcast. Fortunately, Sky F1 is teasing one more pundit who they're yet to reveal, and of course people have made their own choices before the official reveal. Sebastian Vettel is the obvious. The driver retired at the end of 2022, sadly, and he's since been working closely with motorsports in a bid to make it cleaner and more carbon neutral. I actually talked about him earlier in 2023. Uh, he'd be a brilliant addition to the broadcast. He speaks so eloquently, is so incredibly knowledgeable, and yet so modest. I actually, I talked with him uh, at the Festival of Speed earlier this year, and the way he talked about motorsport and the future of motorsport was incredibly, incredibly motivating. But I'm not sure he'll have the time with all of this other stuff going on, or even the want to return to Formula One in this role. Now, Otmar Safnau is another potential can candidate after he was pushed out of Alpine. He has an incredible understanding of how teams work and why they made certain decisions as an ex-team principal himself. Plus, with Sky scooping up the likes of Bernie Collins, an Aston Martin strategist, there's no doubt the broadcaster is going after all types of roles who can bring value in different ways to the show. And I'm certainly not complaining. I think Bernie, for example, is brilliant. We'll know more about the lineup as we get closer to the beginning of the season. Pre-season testing starts in Bahrain on February 21st, then the season kicks off on the 29th as we start a record season. 24 races will bring the season to an end early December, but who will win? That is the question. Who, if anyone, can take the win from Red Bull? Make sure to subscribe to keep up to date. We'll be doing this a lot more going forward. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. I'm doing a stream deck. It's all live, coming at you straight out of my mouth, barely any editing, but in between videos. <laughs> Please keep up to date at f1briefings.com. That will take you to our little home on the Sports Illustrated website. I will see you there.